Good morning, my friends. Look at all of these truck campers. I'm so excited for today's video. Today, we're gonna to be touring uh, Northwood Manufacturing's uh, uh, plant where they make these truck campers, they make travel trailers, they make fifth wheels. So today, I'm so excited to bring you guys along. We're gonna see how everything gets made. Uh, I may not use the best terminology, uh, but, uh, but I'm gonna try my best. I hope that you guys enjoy today's video. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. I'm in paradise right now. There's so many RVs here. It's like, it's a heaven, it's heaven. If you're new to the channel, my name's Taylor. I live in a truck camper, an Arctic Fox 990 truck camper full time. And I've got the opportunity to come and see where my truck camper was born, where it was put together. So right behind me is the, right there, is the main office. Uh, and then the factory is all around us, which we'll get to see in just a second. Uh, but this factory is located in uh, Oregon, in La Grande, Oregon. La Grande is a small town, about 13,000 people. And I believe that uh, this factory employs, uh, is one of the biggest employers in this actual city. So we are about to go into kind of the first step of everything and that is the lamination step. Now our tour guide today, or uh, my tour guide today, is going to be Colby and uh, tell him a little bit about yourself. How long have you been working here for? Uh, I've been working here for about eight years now. I spent about three and a half years doing service, so working on coaches, tearing them apart, putting them back together. And now I've been in the sales office for about three and a half, four years. So eight years total with Northwood. Great company to work for. Yeah. We built an awesome product. Killing it. So he knows what he's talking about. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth with him to get you guys the, the right information. But uh, let's start in this uh, in the shop. I don't even know what to expect. I'm nope. excited. Right Alright guys, so we're at the first step where everything starts and Northwood is, is quite, quite famous for this and that's the aluminum structure. So this is where all of that is cut. And, uh, and then we kind of go on to the next step of assembling that into uh, like, like a frame. So as we go through this video, I'm gonna narrate a little bit of it because it was very loud in the shop. And so some things that Colby said or that I said, you have a really hard time hearing. But basically right now he's showing you the aluminum framing or the aluminum pieces that they pre-cut and bundle together. So the person doing the welding now knows where that piece goes and can easily access it. It's an 060 grade aluminum, which is thicker than industry standard. It allows them to do full bead welding. Yeah, because once you laminate everything together, the structure is so strong. Right. Really, this doesn't need to be. Gotcha. But with us, we like to overkill everything. Gotcha. So everything's pre-cut, and, uh, and then they get to welding. So this is like their, uh, their big selling point. This is kind of like your guys' big selling point as well, that aluminum structure. The aluminum right? structure, yeah. yeah. So it's very close to aircraft grade aluminum. Right. Okay, so we can do full bead welds throughout the entire aluminum piece. Gotcha. And so it is all done by hand, but we got the best MIG welders around. Look at that, right? So it's there. MIG welding. So after they're, uh, they're welded, this is kind of the finished product here. As you guys can see, it looks like a truck camper. Now this is a Wolf Creek. I've got an Arctic Fox. And then they're all stacked along here and basically ready for the next step. Yep, right. so this is an Arctic Fox fifth wheel. Oh, so this is a fifth wheel, gotcha. Yep, so it's gonna be an inch and a half compared to an inch on the Wolf Creek. So the big thing is full bead welds. Notice there's no welds on the face here because oh, okay. we're going to laminate your paneling over the top of that. Right. Anchor core blocking is what we call it. So a solid piece inside the aluminum. Right. Reason being, you run a lag bolt or screw inside of this. Imagine my thumb being that screw. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be able to take a pair of pliers and possibly rip that right out. Right. Okay. Throw that block of wood in there and you're not going to be able to physically pull that out. Right. The big thing about that is it adds to the strength. The screw has something to grab onto. Right. Um, the downside to it is it does add to the overall weight of the coach. So an aluminum structure, most manufacturers are going to do aluminum because of the weight of it. Okay. We go to it because it will not rot. 
And then we add the anchor core blocking on the inside to give it that strength that we want as an Arctic Fox Northwood built coach. I've heard all about this uh, from dealerships, from salesmen, but it's neat just to see it firsthand. You know, you get the finished product and you're like, okay, I, I know there's aluminum structure, I know that there's wood inside, but to actually see it and to actually have it explained to you, I mean, yeah, the, the product's heavy, but it's well built. And I've always said this, I've always preached this to you guys, the ultralight campers, the ultralight trailers, there's a reason why they're ultralight, is because they take stuff out. I'd rather a heavy camper, gotta buy a bit of a bigger truck, but you know it's built well, it'll last you forever. And it'll hold its value. Exactly. Man, I'm like a salesman right now, <laughs> hey? I like it, I like it. It's just true though. It is. And then here's one thing on that cab over you're talking about. How much weight can you put in this cab over? Yes. Okay. So we do what we call a K shadow frame. So you okay. see the K? Yeah. Okay. So the K is common in a truck camper. Right. What is not common is the shadow portion of the K. Shadow, shadow. Okay. Oh, okay. And then we have supports throughout here. Gotcha. Okay. So no matter how well you do a K, that shadow there is helping support it top and bottom. Right. Okay. Because there's a lot of stress being put out out here. That's right. Camp. That's right. And it's all beefed up in this one area too, yep. right? So it's neat when when it's cold outside and the heat's on inside, you can see this. The aluminum framing. The aluminum framing. So it was neat. One day I came out and I went, oh, there's the aluminum framing yep. that they talk about. Let me just back up here quick and I'll get a good shot of that because that's really neat. 990 sidewalls, perfect. So that's a 990 sidewall right here. There it is. Oh, and just a little FYI, this is this is where my camper started, right here. The one that I have, the one that I've been camping in for over uh, almost two years, started right here. That's pretty cool. We go through and we put our high density block foam in place. Okay, gotcha. Okay. The important thing about the block foam that we do is it's a two pound, meaning it's two pounds per square foot. Okay. Okay. And it's high density. This has an R7 value. And it is a virgin foam insulation, meaning it's never been recycled or reused for anything. Okay. All right. From there, we install what's called flashing. Flashing is a very thin galvanized steel. Okay. Okay. You can see that right there. Yep. So what this is used for is this is where all of your interior cabinets are going to be screwed into. Right. So everyone thinks we screw into aluminum framing. If that were the case, we'd be even heavier than we are now. But you are not going to be able to pull any cabinet away from the sidewall because of this. That's going to give it some extra strength. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then what also is important with your foam is you see how nice and sealed and cut that is? Yep. Reason being we cut it with a hot wire. And I will show you how we do that. The great thing about this tour is that you know what you're talking about because you used to do this stuff, eh? I used to, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I used to do a little bit of everything, man. It's not like you're just reading off of a script. No, <laughs> no. First hand, I did it all. Oh, geez, that wire. Yeah, so this wire... Where do here, I stand? You're good right there. Here? So this okay. wire is going to be activated. It's right here, guys. By this switch at my feet, okay? Yeah. The important factor is this table's flat. It's all nice and square. We put the straight edge here, okay? I then take this. Yeah. Yes, it is. That just melts through. Like butter. Like butter. But the important factor about this is, okay, so when you cut it, that edge is nice and sealed. Yes. Okay, when you try to cut it with a razor blade, it's basically going to look like that. Right, gotcha. Okay, that versus that. So after the aluminum structure is put together and the high density foam is placed inside, then it goes through a machine. And this machine is what laminates everything together. So you've probably heard about lamination, just as I did, but I had no idea what that meant until I saw it in action. This machine or this roller applies 8,000 pounds of pressure per square inch. And it squishes everything together so there's absolutely no pockets or air bubbles. And here's a much better visual from Colby. Fiberglass? Yep. Lou on. Yep. So all fifth wheels get two layers of Lou on. Two layers, okay. R7 high density foam. Yep. Interior Lou on. Gotcha. So the stuff you see on the inside, the stuff you see on the outside. Gotcha. All right, guys, so it starts with fiberglass and then that board goes on. And then the frame goes on top of that with all the foam inside. And then it's another one of those Luon boards, I believe it's called. And then it's all stuck together. And then it goes through this machine and basically flattens it out and gets rid of uh, any like air bubbles and whatnot. And that's basically what your wall is and many other components of your RV. So this is kind of interesting. When it comes off the getting, uh, getting flattened, this whole table turns into an air hockey table. So there's little holes and air blows up uh, uh, through it. 
And when you put a piece like this on, if it's a bigger piece, you can just use very little force to bring it down the line, like bigger pieces like this. Those look to be travel trailer sidewalls. This size wall ranges anywhere from 600 to 800 pounds. Okay. So then we take this, we set it on the CNC router over there where it routes out every hole in the sidewall. Okay, gotcha. So everything from windows, luggage doors, to even your 110 outlet hole. Sweet. And it does it accurately within one one hundredth of an inch. Woo. So literally you could set a frame on top of the next one and you will not be able to notice any difference at all between the two frames. Ah, neat. So the key thing with that is we order a window for that size of the hole we cut out. Right. Same with the doors, luggage doors, everything is precisely cut out. The standard in the industry is using a, basically a template and then hound routing with the template. Mm. And if you've ever used a router, mm. they're very easy to jump off track. And if I were to do it, it'd probably look like a shark took a couple of bites out of the frame. <laughs> right. Right, gotcha. Yeah. So it's better that machine does it over there. Exactly. Gotcha. That machine doesn't care if your girlfriend broke up with it yesterday. <laughs> it doesn't care what happened. So this thing just got laminated. Right. And then gets put over here and stacked. And then this big machine right here is like a big suction cup machine. Right. So that way we can lift the entire frame up with simply the interior panels and move it from place to place. I see. Okay, so this is only foam. There's no, uh, there's no framing inside. Oh god. Hey, I'm 290, man. And you step. I'm a heavy step guy. Up on it. <laughs> so I'm literally standing on foam right now. I'm 290 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I trust you when they see when you say they're built well. Yep. So interesting thing about these two is our larger pieces are from the door. We will set back on the CNC router and we route them out for our booth dinette platforms. So oh, underneath the cushions yeah, yeah. in some models, you will find route outs just like this. All right, so that's kind of where it all starts. That's everything about lamination. I hope I did an okay job explaining that. Thanks, by the way. Fantastic. You're a huge help to this. Absolutely. Because I was worried. I'm like, I don't know any of the technical lingo. So what's the uh, what's the next step here? The next step is... It depends if you're going to build a truck camper, travel trailer, or fifth wheel, yeah, right? Yeah, so like a truck camper, we're going to start since you got your 990. Right. It all starts with the basement, which is a fully welded, laminated, basically just like the sidewall we just seen being laminated and CNC routed. Right, okay. So that's basically the foundation, um, the structure. So like a fifth wheel travel trailer gets a chassis. Yep. Truck camper, it gets a fully laminated, welded floor. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. And so you build from the, uh, from the inside out. Inside out, yep. Yeah, yep. neat. Well, and it all starts with the floor. It all starts with the floor, yeah. Or yep. the chassis, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go check this out. All right, guys, so before we go and check that out, I just spotted these. I'm like, what is this? This is all your uh, your black water tank, your gray water tank, and your your fresh water tank is clear. But this is uh, black water and gray water. So just kind of neat to, uh, to see what's underneath your floor. I actually didn't even know they were they were L-shaped. They're L-shaped. Huh. Oh, and then fresh water's back here. So the, uh, the Arctic Fox that I have, 59 gallons of fresh water, which is huge, and people are always impressed when I say that number, but this is what a uh, fresh water tank looks like. So like I said before, guys, this video is gonna be uh, very long because I really wanna go in depth. For people that are curious about it, I don't wanna, I, I wanna get as much information as possible. That's just why it's really nice having Colby here. Uh, but for people who don't want to watch like a 45 minute video, I'm going to kind of segment this into different videos. <laughs> it's all good, buddy. Um, and so there's going to be, I'm going to make probably like three videos of this tour. One will be smaller, just the gist of how a camper is made, how an RV is made, I should say. Uh, the first one that you guys will see is probably going to be, I was saying like 30 minutes, but it's probably going to be like 45 minutes because there's so much to talk about. Uh, and then... Uh, and yeah, I, I, I can't explain how neat this is to see it all in action. I mean, look at right behind me. There's one of, uh, where is it? Right there, truck camper getting hauled there. It's just so neat to see all this stuff in action and to really get a better understanding of how my camper's built. So when people talk about certain things uh, or when I'm worried about certain things like going down a bumpy road, 
uh, and I feel like my camp was just gonna split in half, I know now that it won't because I know kind of what goes in behind the scenes and what you can't see from, uh, from the finished product. So this is the foundation, this is the floor that you walk on in a truck camper. So fully welded aluminum, okay. Yep. side to side. Yep. High density R7 foam on the inside. Okay. Okay. Lou on paneling on both sides. Right. Okay. From there they will then take your Lou on and they will then wrap your floor with your linoleum. Oh yeah. Okay. And it is fully glued in place. Fully glued, okay. Alright, cool. this is a thicker grade aluminum, okay, so this is just like what you'd find if you wanted to buy stuff for your house. Right now he's got your linoleum right here. So that's what we just saw, yeah, yeah gotcha. All the way throughout the floor. Yep. So you're basically your camper's upside down right now. Oh, okay. Okay, so this allows us to put your tanks, black, fresh, gray. I was just showing them that, yeah. It goes directly on your floor. Okay. Okay. So that way when we flip it around, there's enough space to insulate it with an R11 insulation right. without compressing it. Awesome. Okay. We have enough space in there for that all to be, have enough air space to circulate it with all your heat and everything. Then it's flipped over and then that's what you see. Yeah. So basically you have enough space underneath here for your R11 insulation. Right. Hey, cool. okay. I'm going to shove it that way. Okay, okay. you're good, man. The fully suspended sill. Okay. Tie this in place to keep it nice and tight to your tank. Right. And then we even put little chunks of linoleum so it doesn't ever wear through the tank. Oh yeah, okay. Alright. So there's a rumor out there yeah. that you cannot pull your truck away from your camper without your tanks falling through the floor. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's out there. It's completely <laughs> false and it's pretty much impossible to take right. care of your coach, okay? Because of all the supports and everything right, we do throughout. Right, right. It is not supported by the bottom. Yeah, I haven't run into that problem, and I've taken my camper on and off many times. Yeah. These are all done by an outside company here in Legrand. Okay. So we basically send them our wire diagrams. They send us all proper gauges, yep. colors, links, and they even, for the radio, attach these little clips here. Right. Okay, so this makes our life way easier, grabbing one bundle of wires, running it through the entire camper, and you're ready to go. So this harness is everything. Everything. From lights to switches to everything. So when I sit on the toilet, I'm sitting somewhere over here, right? Yep. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> I just wanted to just point that out to everybody. <laughs> all right, it's starting to look a little bit uh, more developed. Get in there. Okay. Now got your side boxes in place. Okay. Once again, fully welded aluminum laminated together. Yep. Okay. From there, we're gonna install your bulkhead. This is what is called the bulkhead. This portion is glued and screwed to your floor, AKA the foundation. Okay. All right. From there, we're gonna mount your sidewalls in place. And your sidewalls have a nice aluminum beam to completely support it. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. So we're not relying strictly on glue and screws. Right. The sidewall is going to physically sit on there yep. and have a support holding the sidewall. So here's that inside outside concept. Right. So everything is built from the inside out. So this allows us to run all your wiring, all your plumbing in place, yep. and then we can check everything. Right. Okay, they're built by people, inspected by people. We all make errors, okay? The most important thing about that is just rechecking everything. Right. So there's a specific spot of which we're in it right now where they construct and build all of the uh, all of the cabinets. So all pre-cut lumber. These are all pre-cut by our lumber mill. Everything's labeled, wrapped, and everything's identical. Makes it super easy just to grab it and start assembling. Grab it, right? Pre-drill it, start assembling. Right. Yep. And I love these uh, these templates. Yeah. I call them. What do you guys call them here? Jigs. Jigs. There's, oh, we got to find, oh, there it is, right here. So these are all jigs or templates for different setups. Yep. Right? For From anything from whatever that is. To this. To that. Drawers to. To big. This is the side of the camper here. Right, okay, okay gotcha. So this is where your wardrobe's at. Gotcha. With your cabinet, and then your bottom cabinet there. And so it's all placed out. You grab your, uh, your material from here that's pre-cut. You go over, you start assembling it. There's spots to put all the wood, start screwing it together, and then it ends up like uh, looking like something like this. Everything from cabinets to upholstery, fabric, they're all made in-house. 
and they're having a good time doing it. Everything up and into your cabinet. Okay, yeah. Okay. So this is like this dead spot here. We can run your plumbing, wiring up through. Right. Um, one key thing in some spots is we do insulate your water lines. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is a little insulation that we wrap around it. Right. Okay. Because this is going to be going behind your shower. Yep. Okay. So there's a tendency for that to possibly freeze up. Right. So we just completely eliminate it by wrapping it with insulation. Gotcha. Um, when I was in, went across Canada, actually. It was either this line or that line froze up on me. Ah. Just because this door. Yep. Right? Yeah. That was the only thing that froze up. One thing that you can do to prevent that is to keep this drawer open with oh. your heater on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that way the air can get down into there. And also we have a fan vent here. There's that fan, yeah. That kicks on automatically and should be pushing air down there as yeah. well. At this point, everything is tested from your water line, propane line, all of your holding tanks. Everything's tested in stages. It's easier to catch an error right now rather than down the line. 90 PSI for 10 minutes. Right. Okay. The smallest staple inside a water line is not going to cause a water leak with your water pump going. You pressurize it with enough pressure and then that water hole will expand. And you're going to get water everywhere. Right. Okay. We're now at a stage where it starts to look like an actual RV. The sidewalls are being put on right now by this gentleman. So it's cool to see this right now in its state. Propane goes here, batteries, fresh water fill, window. What I can remember goes on that side. So that's the slide sidewall. Slide side and then right on the other side, you got your no side. Right. So here's the slide side wall. And then the uh, the other side for a, a 990 that does have the slide. Look at that. It's getting close. Getting close. Getting close. Time to hear the rear wall. Right. Oh, and hey, the cup holders. The famous cup holders yeah. that I never use. Really? <laughs> no, I never use them. What about the one in the dinette? I've used that a couple times. The generators, of course, are hooked up to propane and tested as well. <laughs> All right, man, next step. This is probably gonna be my favorite spot just because I'm super anal about water damage and what is on the roof. I know there's rubber roofing or EPO, but I don't know what's under that. So Colby's gonna explain what's under that EPO. So what <laughs> is underneath the EPDM? EPDM. Rubber roof. I told you, I told you guys, <laughs> technical terms. It's all good, you're learning, man. Yeah. I'm so learning. literally, what is pretty much underneath the underside is pretty much high density block bolts. Okay, that is it. Gotcha. We do a series of Luon panels just to kind of give it some structure. Right, yeah. But other than that, your structure's coming out of this high density bolt. Gotcha. And I will go grab a big chunk of it. Okay. Sure. So once again, those, uh, those little pieces of, uh, I like to call them plywood, but it's called something different. It's the rubber roof, then that plywood, and then this high density foam. Big chunk of high density foam. Okay. The biggest thing about it, you guys notice the arch? Yeah. Okay. It's five inches at the peak. Okay. Okay, that's R20 plus. Some will say R22, some say R20. We'll just call it R20. Okay. okay. But the biggest thing is, it has the arch. More head space, more interior space, and water runoff on the top. Yep, it's key. Which I've plugged so many times in my videos. The the arch roof, or the arch roof, makes it that much more spacious. It just feel it's it's a completely different feeling than a flat roof or roof, as they say it down here. Hey, roof, roof, roof or roof, roof. <laughs> all thing. And then all your lights are getting put in right here. Yep. You all your wiring, lights, the gotcha. carpet goes on the ceiling here. The carpet, yeah. Fully glued in place. Yeah. Okay. And then your finished structure is like this. That's your finished, gotcha, yep. okay. Then you notice, fully vacuum bonded roof. Okay. Okay, so when I say vacuum bonded, we put all the pieces together. Yeah. And then right behind you in that big blue tarp right there. Yeah. That's like a big vacuum seat. Oh, I see. So what that does is that pulls all the air out of the roof. Yeah. And then laminates the panel nice and tight to the frame. Yep. 
drywall screws all the way down from the sidewall. Gotcha. It's not going to go anywhere. There's a little bit of the lip still, so we can round it off nice and flush. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what happens with the front, it's a one-piece fiberglass piece. It starts from the top. Yeah. They will wrap it down through here where they then put the brace in place. Yeah. Okay? The brace will stay there until the rubber roof is on, which is about six to eight hours. Gotcha. Okay? That brace stays there. Then we wrap it all the way down to here. Right. Keep it nice and tight up against the blocking. Right. We put a brace all the way from side to side here as well. Okay. And then after that six to eight hours, we take the braces off. We can mold it, your windows in place, right. everything, it's nice and tight. That blue is here. Nice. Blue, yeah, gotcha. Perfect. Yep. And we're at the one place or the one station that makes a thing that I rarely use, which is my slide. <laughs> but I'm going to get better at it. Maybe do more camping in RV parks and I can pop that slide out. Utilize that space, man. Yeah, I know. That's what it's for, right? Yep. So it's built just like the rest of your camper. Fully welded laminated sidewall, fiberglass, Luon, aluminum, insulation. Gotcha. Your floor is the same way. Fully welded aluminum frame for your floor. Okay. okay. And there's an insulation on the inside of that. Oh, really? That is key because most fifth wheels and trailers use plywood for the floor. And you cannot insulate it. And then when they stick out, they're just yeah, cold. it's just a piece of wood. Yeah. Okay. Whereas with this, it's aluminum, so we can put insulation throughout it and insulate your truck camper floor. Nice. Everything gets put in place: windows, seals, rubber roof. Yep. Carpet. You got your booth. What's happening, man? And then this is also huge. You'll notice inside your reefer cabinet insulation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So all that stuff going on inside your reefer is going to be basically kept within the reefer cabinet. Right. Reefer is so much cooler than the word fridge. Right? Reefer. That's our reefer. The reefer. The reefer. Hey, there's your furnace. Yep, furnace is underneath there. Um, right here, you'll notice this black material. Yep. This is called anti-wick. We apply that around all openings. Oh, okay. Even though we use beetle seal, that's another precaution to keep water out of the wood. Gotcha. You got your decals, aka decals in Canada. <laughs> that's right, man. You know what? It's funny. My girlfriend actually says decals. Really? And I said, babe, you're Canadian. You can't say decals. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, they're all applied by hand. Okay, they're all put around here. They will cut them in place. They'll seal, them, seal this thing. And then it gets mounted with this guy here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you can help us fix it, put it inside the box. This machine just raises a slide into the, uh, the camper. And then it looks like this. There's one guy in each production line or facility that goes around and tapes anything, what would you say, anything that's... Uh, any flaw. Any flaw. Anything that's that work. doesn't work. Um, something that maybe needs to be looked over again. Um, yeah. He's taping everything and anything. Right. And then it, it, it gets fixed or it, sometimes it goes back. Yes. Gotcha. Yep. Sometimes if it's a major it's a minor, issue, right, right. we'll actually pull the person from that department, bring them over here to fix the issue. Gotcha. Um, sometimes it gets to our pre-delivery inspection department, and if it takes them longer than 15 minutes, then they get the guy as well. Ah, so. I see. So yeah, so everything from just little nicks to uh, dents to scrapes, yeah, it's really neat. And this is the, uh, you know, basically the last, the last stop for truck campers, guys. They're looking amazing. I love the uh, the decals or the decals, as I say, on them right now. They've changed it a little bit since the 2017. These are 2019, of course. Um, they came back to the original colors. They went to the brown color for a bit. Now they're doing the the blue, gray, and black again, which I love. I love this, and uh, they changed it to more of a blockier. Let's let's come up front here more of a blockier uh, front uh, uh, decal. 
which I really enjoy. I actually enjoy both. I, I don't have a favorite on that. This is a little bit more modern though. I might have to go with this. I might have to. Sorry, sorry to my 2017. All right guys, we're gonna take a little break. That is the truck camper warehouse. I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I hope that in my editing I can make it a smaller video. Um, I might actually do separate videos, just thinking of it now because that was a very long video. Do separate videos for truck campers, travel trailers, fifth wheels. But I was really excited to see the truck campers because that's what I own. That's what I make videos about. So I hope you learned something. I learned a ton. So as I'm sitting here editing this video, I realized that it is a very long video and I am actually going to show you some footage of the travel trailers and the fifth wheels right now, but I'm going to make that an entirely separate video. With just showing you how the truck campers get made, you have a really good understanding of how a travel trailer gets made and how a fifth wheel gets made. It's all kind of the same. Of course, travel trailers and fifth wheels have chassis and they also have a little bit of a different roof system. But other than that, they're built from the inside out using the same walls, the same system to make the cabinets, and the same idea goes into the wiring and all of the plumbing. So I think at this point in the video you have a really good understanding of how an RV is made. And you have a really great understanding of how much work and hours from men and women go into making these beautiful RVs. Now, I'd just like to mention one more very, very important step. But before I do that, if you would like to see the other videos that are coming out, just hit subscribe and click the little bell beside the subscribe button and you'll get notified when the video comes out. If you're watching this video down the road, the entire series of videos that I shot at the Northwood factory will be in the description box below this video so that you can watch everything and all of the footage that I have on it. And like I said before, I'm going to be making a series of different videos about RVs and how they're made. So without further ado, let's go to, in my opinion, the most important step. So at the very end of the day, you've got the finished product. Now, how does it get to you? Well, this yard right behind me, you see all of these RVs, and this is their transportation branch, I guess you could say, Beeline Hauling. And so basically, this company uh, most likely has delivered the RV that you're about to buy to the dealership. So they are all of North America, Canada, US. So the neat thing about this company, I thought that these were shipped with semis. Uh, it's not, it's actually one ton truck. So with the fifth wheel, they can deliver one fifth wheel at a time. And with the travel trailers and truck campers, they can actually pair them up, put the truck camper on and then haul the travel trailer behind it. So they can deliver two at a time. But it's amazing that you see the, this product all over the place, but you never realize how much work actually gets, how much work actually goes into it to get it to where you are. I mean, they've got a de dealership up in Alaska. It's in the middle of nowhere. So that is the end of the tour. I want to give a big thank you to you, my friend. Your smile. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you, you made it. You made this an amazing trip. You showed me everything. Awesome you went into super amazing detail with everything so uh, big shout out to you this guy has his own YouTube channel and I want you guys to do me a favor and go to subscribe to it uh, it is CCS outdoor I'm gonna put it right here if you want to see somebody catch a fish catch fish I don't catch fish if you want to see something like that if you want to see some hunting videos some outdoor videos this is the guy so go check that out he's been fantastic and uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up so one, once again man no thank hey, you so much it was all my pleasure man it was a pleasure I and all uh, you for us. I will uh, I'll see you guys in the next scene when I say goodbye to all these guys see you guys bye oh guys let me tell you something look at that we're leaving that was honestly one of the best trips I've ever had the, the guys here completely took care of me uh, everybody was super sweet super nice very hospitable uh, they uh, I met everybody in the office so I want to give you guys a huge shout out you make an amazing product it shows from people who watch me it shows from the comments I get from the messages I get from the emails that I get you guys are one of the best RV manufacturers in North America and the truth is is that 
I'm not just saying it because I went to the shop. I'm, I've been saying it for years. Uh, well, almost two years. Um, so, and I know a lot of people who are watching this stand behind that. I mean, Arctic Fox Northwood is, is just an incredible product that's known, uh, you know, all across North America. So, want to give a huge shout out. I uh, want to give a special thanks to Colby, did an awesome job just giving me a tour and hanging out with me for two days, showed me literally everything, uh, all, of my questions, all of my questions were answered, and, uh, and uh, thanks for everyone in the warehouse and in the factory who put up with my annoying filming. I wanted to do a little bit more filming, I wanted to, like I said, I, I just had, there's so much to film there. I wanted to get different camera angles and different cameras and lenses, but I uh, have kind of a limited amount of time. So I hope that everyone watching really enjoyed that as much as I did. I hope that I explained it and, and got the, captured the moment uh, for you. I, I hope that you felt like you were there. Uh, that is my job and I hope that I did a good job uh, doing that. Uh, with that being said, I think that, uh, boy, I'm, I'm starting to lose my voice. We were just yelling that uh, in the factory. I think that I'm gonna release this video. This video is gonna be a uh, long, long video of the entire process of everything I saw today, you saw today. And then uh, I think I'm gonna release three videos after that. Number one, how is a truck camper made? Number two, how is a travel trailer made? And number three, how is a fifth wheel made? Uh, I'd like to do some narration. I'd like to just make those videos because I think I have enough footage to do that. Uh, so if you watch this whole video and you don't feel like watching the next three, I totally understand it. But thanks for tuning in for this video. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you. Keep living that dream. Until next time, my friends, take care and bye-bye.